Welcome back to Bobblehead Homestead. I'm Jeff. Today is Saturday. It's about 3.30. Uh, today, I've only got from 3 to 5 off, and i got to run into town for some coffee filters. But I thought I'd throw a quick video together because I need to do it. Yep. Um, and then uh, tonight there might be some... I only have to work until 7, so that'll be good. So only a couple hours... Um, I wanted to show the Hugel culture. So let me spin you around and show you what's going on with the future Hugel culture gardens. We are out here by the lane and the driveway, and there's uh, three. You can kind of see the mounds. Yep. So they are down here. Um, Drew dug these out. We stole the so the dirt from there to use to level out the house pad, which Drew did an awesome job leveling out the house pad. Uh, filled these with downed trees and limbs. Uh, then I brought in some topsoil and we mounted them up and here we go. And I ain't got time to do nothing with these uh, <laughs> right now. So they're just sitting here. Uh, original idea, I was hoping to put chickens in here and I still might do that this winter. Um, that'll require, uh, more fencing, and so I might get to that or not. But, um, uh, yeah, so this, uh, next year, this will be a garden, and, oh, it's going to weeds, it's going to weeds. Well, if you think of this, this is bad, let's take a look at the other one. Yeah, see all that tall grass? All that tall grass. That is the other Hugo Culture Garden area. And uh, I gotta show you this. So you can see the mounds. All the green is on the mounds. And then the walkway is all bare. All the green is on the mounds. All the walkway is bare. So this Hugel culture is growing some great grass right now, um, which is encouraging. And, you know, compare this to the other one, there's hardly anything growing out there, but this stuff is taking off like mad. Well, I'm thinking it's because of the water. And uh, see, that's all uphill. So when it rains, all the water comes down here and most of it's trapped there. We get a little that runs uh, runs past it, and then it goes uh, under the driveway and then down there. And um, right now, most of the runoff is going it's going past the Hugel Culture garden bed there. So um, if I can get Wiley over here with his box blade someday, we might sculpt that and steer the water into those Hugel Culture beds. So I think that's why this is so much more uh you know growing is because it had more water but and then uh oh no this grass took over your hugel culture this is actually going to be uh probably a very good thing for me that is acting as a cover crop and let me um let me pull up some videos from living web farms and i'll i'll uh, show you what i what i mean by a cover crop uh, now we're going to get down to where we're having fun. We're going to talk about how to do it to grow gardens and to have fun. And that's what it's all about. This is how we used to roll. This is an old horse drawn roller. We put a hitch on it, pull it with a 10 horse or 15 horse John Deere tractor. This is May the 5th, the 3rd. You can see it must have been cold. I still got a coat on. There is a tomato, you know, with a, ca with a cage. The first year we did it, we put black husks. Uh, soaker hoses in never turn them on so we don't use black soaker hoses anymore you know 20 pounds more tomatoes per plant versus black plastic versus black plastic that is, a that is a transplant yes it is how we do it we take a little spade wiggle the soil open stick it down in there put the rye back put a cage over it goodbye you're done no more black black end rot because the soil don't splash up on the tomatoes. You know, they're great for weed suppression. 
There they are. There they are. Stakes may not work. You may have to use cages to make them do that well. But just look at the armor. That's what I wanted to show you. There's armor. No weed crusher. You know. I'm going to show you my pieces of equipment that I used. That's my roller. <laughs> my wife's, no, my daughter's car. It's a Jetta diesel. She was not happy. I don't understand. I said, daughter, let me use your car. My lawnmower died. There, this is uh, Durr, George Durr. He's right on Route 77 just after you cross into Ohio. 750 acres of pumpkins. Four years ago he called me and he says, we, you put pumpkins on rye. Tell me about that. Living Web Farms has so many useful resources, and I watched that. I went through all their videos before I even moved to Arkansas. So I was, yeah, and I grew up in Illinois, so I know what the farmland looks like over there. So I'm not a big fan of your traditional gardening and farming methods, because uh, I've seen what's happened to Illinois. They turned the most fertile prairie land into uh you know dirt that can't do anything unless you you know pound it with uh with fertilizers and herbicides and pesticides and and stuff like that so this is a great natural way to um uh to garden or to farm um you saw the one clip you know they're just uh they're just you know rolling it over these are annuals so uh you know it uh, they die off automatically in the winter and then you just roll over them and then that creates a top layer of mulch and you plant right into it. How cool is that? How cool is that? All of the, uh, the roots from this grass, they will die out. All the microorganisms and fungus and bugs will start uh, eating those roots, turning them into soil. Um, all of the, the stuff above the ground, you know, I'll just flatten it out and that'll, that acts as a mulch or a cover crop. You know, he was saying that his tomatoes yielded so much better than putting plastic down by using this method. You don't have to till all of the roots in there. They're loosening up the soil. And then when they decay, um, you know, those are uh, going to be pockets for water to. And it's just, it's a good system. It works and it's a lot less work than your traditional garden where you're tilling and you know putting yeah all that other stuff i'm a lazy gardener man <laughs> so if i can research and find ways to make it easier now uh, the proof will be in time so you know next year at this time we'll see how this does but uh in theory this might work to my advantage um in the spring i can just roll over this and um and then plant right into it um, I'll probably still need to add fertilizer for a couple years at least until that wood really starts to break down. But this is a good sign for me. I've already got a cover crop on there. Uh, this grass probably isn't the best. Uh, like what I might do in the other place is uh, get some like, uh, what do they call it? Winter rye. Winter rye. And, um, you know, maybe I'd want to till those three garden beds and get all the... Uh, grass and stuff out of there and then and then plant some winter rye and then in the spring just roll over that winter rye plant right into it and um, uh, we'll see if that works stick around bobblehead homestead for next year oh yeah i wanted to point out while i'm out here that uh, i just have residential power lines these are just normal residential power lines some people are confused and think i have those you know, high voltage trans, uh, you know, transfer transmitting lines, uh, like some of the other homesteads around here have those. But mine are just residential lines. I got two lines, and then that third line on the bottom, that's the fiber optic. That one wasn't even there when I bought the place. So they just ran the fiber optic. But this is not your high voltage transferring lines that they check with helicopters and all that stuff. This is just a normal, uh, residential line like you see all over the place and uh, finish up this video I'm gonna do a shout out to Big Dreams Tiny Budget Anne Marie over there Big Dreams Tiny Budget she's doing a vlogist so almost every day in August I've done that before 
Uh, she came to my birthday party a couple years ago. She's in Arkansas, way over on the other side of Arkansas, but uh, building her homestead, renovating a mobile home, uh, do it yourself, and uh, go have a look at Anne Marie, Big Dreams, Tiny Budget, as she does vlogging. Uh, tell her bobblehead sent you. <laughs> tell her bobblehead said hey, and uh, thanks for coming to my birthday party. All right, uh, that's all I have for today. There might be some activities tonight at the neighbor's house. Um, I might try to get a nap so I don't fall asleep early. We'll see. Thanks for watching. Thanks for everything, and take it easy.